This is Lesson 17 in our Calculus 2 series, Areas Between Curves. In Calc 1, we learned that the definite integral of f of x from a to b is the limit as n goes to infinity of the Riemann sums for f of x. So here, the elements of the sum are f of x i delta x, and this gives us the area of the rectangle on the ith subinterval. And so we could call that product a i. And the picture looks like this. And so here, ai, that area, is this distance here, f of xi minus 0, multiplied by the width of the subinterval, which is delta x. And this definite integral gives us the area under f of x, for example, when f of x is a positive function. For example, for f of x equals x squared plus 1, the area of the rectangle over the ith subinterval would be f of xi minus 0, so that would be xi squared plus 1 multiplied by delta x. And here I'm showing a right hand sum in these pictures. But remember that we can approximate using any Riemann sum because in the limit, as n goes to infinity, we'll always get the definite integral. So here, the total area under the curve is the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus 1. And so we take our antiderivative, plug in the bounds, and subtract, and we get 4 thirds. Now let's consider areas where we might want to use horizontal rectangles. For example, if we want the area here, this is f of x equals x squared, but we're looking for the area between this curve and the y-axis as y goes from 0 to 4 it would be simplest to take horizontal rectangles. And so we're going to be integrating, in this case, with respect to y. So we want to solve for x here as a function of y. So here, x is equal to positive or negative radical y, which tells us that this branch of the parabola is x equals radical y, and this branch is x equals negative radical y. And so the area of our rectangle for the Riemann sum here would be radical yi multiplied by delta y. And so the total area would be the limit as n goes to infinity. And so we'd be integrating with respect to y, radical y. And the bounds here are 0 and 4 on y. So integrating, we get 16 thirds. So now we have the idea of not only integrating to find areas with respect to x, but we can integrate with respect to y to find areas as well. Building on that, let's take a look at the area between curves. Here we have y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and we want to find the shaded area here. That's the area between the curves over the interval from a to b. Well, we know how to find the area under y equals f of x, we integrate f of x from a to b. And we know how to find the area under y equals g of x, we integrate g of x from a to b. So what we want to do here is subtract those two integrals. And we can write that as one integral here, the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. And it's always going to be the top function minus the bottom function that we're integrating. And keep in mind that this integral of f of x minus g of x from a to b is really using the approximating rectangle here. The height that we have for this rectangle is going to be f of x minus g of x. That's the difference in length here. Multiply by the width delta x, which becomes dx in the integral. So for example, the area that we just took above using horizontal rectangles and integrating with respect to y, now we can integrate with respect to x if we just subtract the top function minus the bottom function. Our top function here is y equals 4, and our bottom function is y equals x squared. And our bounds on x are 0 to 2. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared. Again, that's the top function minus the bottom function. And integrating, we get the same answer of 16 thirds. 
Now let's take a look at the area bounded by y equals x squared plus 2 and y equals x plus 1 for x between 0 and 1. We always want to start by sketching. So we sketch our two graphs. y equals x squared plus 2 is our top function and y equals x plus 1 is our bottom function. And so the area that we're looking for is going to be top function minus bottom function integrated here from 0 to 1. Those are the bounds we were given on x. So we're simplifying inside, and then take the antiderivative, plug in our bounds, and here we get 5 sixths. Now notice that the functions I've been showing so far are all greater than or equal to 0. Well, what if one or both of the functions is less than 0 over the interval? is it still going to be top minus bottom to give us that shaded area in between the two curves? And actually it is. So let's take a look at the graph here. We have the top curve is y equals f of x and the bottom curve y equals g of x. And this first case is the case that we've been seeing so far where both the values are positive. For example, this height might be 7 and this height might be 2, and so this distance would be 5, and so subtracting top minus bottom would make sense and give us that distance. Let's just check here if we have f of x positive and g of x negative. For example, we could have, say, this height be 4 and this height be negative 3. Then if we subtract the 2, would we get that distance we need? And the answer is yes, 4 minus a negative 3 gives us the 7, the positive 7 that we need. That's that distance. So even if we have one function positive, one function negative, it's still going to be top minus bottom to get us that area in between the two curves. Similarly, if both of the function values are negative, for example, this top value might be negative 2 and this bottom value negative 5, then let's take a look at top minus bottom. That's negative 2 minus a negative 5. So that's negative 2 plus 5, which is 3, and that is the distance that we would need here. So it's always going to be top minus bottom when you're integrating with respect to x to find area between the curves. So let's take a look at this example. Find the area bounded by y equals x squared plus 1 and y equals x plus 1 for x going from negative 2 to 1. So the first thing we want to do is sketch, as always. And so we sketch y equals x squared plus 1. That's our parabola. And we have our line y equals x plus 1. And we want to make sure that we get the correct points of intersection. So it's worth taking a minute and setting these two functions equal and solving for x to make sure we get the proper points of intersection. And here, solving x squared plus 1 is equal to x plus 1, we get x equals 0 and x equals 1. So then the area that we're looking for is the area bounded by these two curves and between these x values. So that area looks like this. But now notice that our top function changes over this interval. So we're going to have to split the integral into two parts. We're going to have the integral from negative 2 to 0 and then the integral from 0 to 1 because it always needs to be top minus bottom. And so from negative 2 to 0, we have x squared plus 1 minus x plus 1. And from 0 to 1, we have x plus 1 minus x squared plus 1. And don't forget to use parentheses here to make sure that you have the proper sign. And then we want to simplify these integrals before we continue. So we simplify what's inside and then integrate. And so we end up with 29 sixths for that area. Now I'll have you try a problem on your own. Find the area bounded by y equals negative x squared plus 4 and y equals x plus 2. So we want to start by sketching and be sure to find the points of intersection. You'll notice here that a specific x interval wasn't given. So actually that x interval is going to be defined by the points of intersection when you sketch these graphs. So please pause the video and work on that. So here's the sketch we have, the points of intersection we get by setting the two functions equal to each other. And so we get x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 1. 
And notice the wording of the problem. It said find the area bounded by these two curves. So the area that is bounded by these two curves is going to be only from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1. So this shaded area is the area that we're looking for. So we want to integrate top minus bottom. So we have negative x squared plus 4 minus, again, please use parentheses here, we have an x plus 2 here. And so we simplify and then we integrate. And we're here, we get 9 halves. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Find the shaded area. So it's the same curves as above, but now we have a different region. So we have y equals negative x squared plus 4 and y equals x plus 2, but now it's this region that we want to find the area. Now, to recognize top and bottom curves for this region, we realize that the top curve is changing at x equals 1. So we're going to split this into two integrals. The first integral from negative 2 to 1 has a top curve of y equals x plus 2 and a bottom curve of y equals 0. And then the integral from 1 to 2 has a top curve of y equals negative x squared plus 4 and a bottom curve of y equals 0. So we're here. And we integrate and get 37 sixths. Now we mentioned earlier in the video the idea of taking horizontal rectangles and talking about distance from right to left. So let's take a look at this same region, but let's think about taking horizontal rectangles now. Instead of talking about a top curve and a bottom curve, we could talk about a right curve and a left curve. And this distance here for our rectangle, say at yi, would be radical 4 minus yi minus yi minus 2. Horizontal distances are always measured right minus left. We had top minus bottom for the vertical distances. Now we have right minus left for our horizontal distances. So that height's going to look like that. So that gives us the integral here, right function minus left function. And I'm talking about functions of y now. And so we have radical 4 minus y minus a y minus 2 integrating with respect to y. And we knew that this intersection point happened at x equals 1, while the corresponding y value is then 3. And so we're integrating from 0 to 3 on y. And so we have the bounds 0 and 3 here. Now this integral is a little bit more complicated because we have a u substitution here. Let u be 4 minus y, then du is negative dy, so we put a negative inside and outside. And then this becomes negative u to the 1 half, integrating from 4 to 1. And this stays as is. Integrating and combining, we get the same answer of 37 sixths. So now we have this idea of integrating between curves when we have a right curve and a left curve, or I should say a right function of y and a left function of y. So in general, when we have x equals f of y on the right and x equals g of y on the left, to find the area between the curves, we're integrating right minus left, going from c to d on y. So that's f of y minus g of y. Always going to be right minus left because the values on the right are bigger. So to get that positive distance, we're going to do right minus left. So now let's take a look at this example. We want to find the shaded area. We have x equals y squared minus 4y on the left. We have x equals 2y minus y squared on the right. We're going to have to find points of intersection to get our bounds on y and then we'll integrate. So please pause the video and work on this. Finding the points of intersection, we set the two functions equal to each other. So y squared minus 4y is equal to 2y minus y squared. And so we factor and we get y equals 0 and y equals 3. So 
that does look like it makes sense with our picture here, y equals 0, y equals 3. And so we're going to integrate from 0 to 3 the right function minus the left function. And again, I'm going to remind you to use parentheses because it's a common mistake, I see. So we simplify the inside, integrate, and here we have an area of 9. So to summarize finding area between curves, the first thing you want to do is sketch the region if the sketch is not given to you. And this includes finding all points of intersection. Then you want to determine if the region has top and bottom curves, in which case it'll be a dx integral, or if it has right and left curves, in which case it'll be a dy integral. And if the region can be described both ways, then you want to see which way is going to be easier to set up and compute. And with this summary, we'll conclude our lesson on finding areas between curves.